In today's show, Bitcoin bounces to $30,700 as analyst presents Stock the Flow, Bitcoin price model rehash, as Jurian Timmer, the director of global macro of Fidelity, shares here, it's time for a fresh take on Bitcoin supply and demand dynamics. Also in today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest technical analysis as Crypto Tony shares here, Bitcoin update, I was stopped out last night on my scalp, and now I look for the next scalp. My main focus is to fill some more macro bids between $24,000 and $22,000. However, I will look for a scalp long if we see a break of that trend line and retest. And as Stacey Herbert shares here, Bitcoin plus Bukele equals boom times for El Salvador. The best rebrand in history is paying off big time. El Salvador saw 165% increase in tourist numbers in the first quarter of 2022 versus 2021. This is $117.1 million in additional revenue. Also breaking news just then, Kenya's largest electricity producer has offered its energy surplus to Bitcoin miners. That's right, the country's main electricity producer has issued a general invite for Bitcoin miners looking to take advantage of its renewable energy facility near its capital, Nairobi. Also more breaking news, Bitcoin miner Bit Zero announced they are building a $500 million facility in North Dakota, as well as more breaking news. New York banned Bitcoin mining while city government in Texas is mining. Some embrace innovation. Others push it away. And quoting Pompliano, Bitcoin mining protects a person's private property. New York is explicitly attacking American citizens' right to protect their private property with their proposed Bitcoin mining ban. This will likely be deemed a violation of the Fifth Amendment and unconstitutional. Also in today's show, venture capitalist Tim Draper explains why Bitcoin will soar past this $250,000 price estimate. That's right, venture capitalist Tim Draper has doubled down on his Bitcoin price prediction of $250,000 by the end of this year or early next year. However, it's important to point out, he explained why he expects the price of the cryptocurrency to soar past his estimate. I'll be breaking this down for you. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, all the major cryptos are currently correcting and in the red, but where's the Bitcoin price likely to go next? Find out all this plus so much more in today's show. Here at the News Alerts, I drop a brand new episode every single day. The goal is to get to 100,000 subs. If you like getting that crypto, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. And today's episode is brought to you by BlockFi, the leading provider of financial products and services for crypto investors and the number one platform to buy, sell, and earn cryptocurrency. And one of their flagship products is their BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards Visa credit card, where you can see here they have already paid out over $15 million in crypto rewards to their users. And it's pretty simple. And you can see if you are approved with no impact to your credit score, just note you must reside in the United States. Now, another flagship product of theirs is their BlockFi loan where you can borrow money at rates as low as a four and a half percent APR. You don't have to sell your crypto to get the cash. At BlockFi, you can borrow funds against your crypto assets and you can get a loan while continuing to hodl. And many people get funded within 24 hours and there are no credit checks whatsoever. So go ahead and click the link in the description right down below and get up to a $250 Bitcoin bonus today. And let's start stacking those sats shall we all right welcome back to another episode of crypto news alerts i'm your host jv how's it going crypto fam make some noise in the live chat the bitcoin climbed to fresh local highs overnight into june 3rd after the united states equities cut losses and right here you're looking at the bitcoin one hour candle chart now data from coin telegraph markets pro and trading view showed bitcoin gaining steadily to hit 30,670 on bitstamp before consolidating now the mood among stocks were more solid during the june second session with the s p 500 reclaiming the majority of its lost ground over the past month while the Nasdaq Composite Index ended up 2.7% and analyzing the crypto market compared to the Nasdaq, popular analyst TechDev noted what can be an incoming inflection point, as he shares here on crypto Twitter, potentially interesting Bitcoin slash NASDAQ. And someone responded, Bitcoin bottom at 23,500 plus or minus 500 within the next three months, top between 100,000 and 120,000 early to mid 2023. That's what I'm going with. Feel free to disagree. We can still be friends. Let me know if you agree or disagree with this crypto analyst. Meanwhile, Pentoshi shared, my current working history for SPX and markets in general is this. I have talked about 3840 in the past being a key spot. I believe we just had our swing low and that the next weekly will look like the red part drawn on this chart with a higher low than last week and thus risks 
on ST. Meanwhile, Bitcoin itself continued to face calls for a retracement, which would eclipse May's $23,800 lows. Crypto Tony still targeted between $22,000 and $24,000, demanding a break of a trend line currently near $32,500 to consider long scalping. As he shares here, Bitcoin update, I was stopped out last night on my scalp, and now I look for the next scalp. My main focus is to fill some more macro bids at $24,000 to $22,000. However, I will look for a scalp long if we see a break of that trend line and retest. And quoting crypto analyst Mikhail Van de Pop, Bitcoin held the $30,000 level so long would still be intact from the $29,300 region. And he also shares now flipping $30,300 would be continuation towards $31,800 possible. And zooming out, one on chain analyst became the latest to take on the increasingly controversial stock to flow Bitcoin price model. Having failed to validate its $100,000 end of the year prediction in 2021, stock to flow has become increasingly sidelined as its creator, Plan B, fields criticism. And while acknowledging the model's potential shortcomings, Jurian Timmer, the head of global macro at on chain analytics firm, Glassnode revisited it, offering a tweak which he argued would serve to increase its utility. As he shares here in this massively detailed Twitter thread, he wrote, it's time for a fresh take on Bitcoin supply and demand dynamics. Take a look at this chart and we'll dive in. And this Twitter thread is massively detailed and extremely long. So I'm going to point out some of the highlights. Let's start right here. The close up below shows that this more modest supply model has been in hindsight more accurate than the original stock to flow projections for this halving cycle. And he also goes on to share here, this modified supply model not only better reconciles the demand model, but it appears to better explain Bitcoin's lackluster price action as of late. Bitcoin never went to the stock to flow models $100,000 plus projections. Maybe this is why. And he tags Plan B. I am curious to hear your take on this. And checking out Plan B's Twitter account, you can see he recently retweeted this thread by Jurian Timmer on the stock to flow model. And Jurian Timmer pretty much concludes, if accurate, it suggests still robust, but less pie in the sky upside than before, maybe even several years of sideways in line with the having cycle and likely continued volatility. I remain bullish on Bitcoin as an aspiring store of value in a world of ongoing financial repression. But the above exercise is a good reminder that we should always revisit our assumptions, especially when the price action deviates from expectations. Investing is a dynamic process and investing in Bitcoin is no exception. The end. So there you have it. And checking out the latest from Stacey Herbert. She recently tweeted, Bitcoin plus Bukele equals boom times for El Salvador. The best rebrand in history is paying off big time. El Salvador saw 165% increase in tourist numbers in the first quarter of 2022 versus 2021. This is $117.1 million in additional revenue. Let's freaking go. Shout out to Max and Stacy of the Orange Pill Pod. Now breaking news just in, Kenya's largest electricity producer has offered its energy surplus to Bitcoin miners. But before I break this down, first let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, all the major cryptos are currently correcting and in the red, with Bitcoin down 1.3% for the day, trading just above $29,600. We have Ether down almost 3%, trading just above $1,750, while Binance, Coin, Solana, Polkadot, XRP, and Cardano are all correcting and in the red. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. Kenyan energy company Kengen has put out a call to Bitcoin miners to move nearby and buy its excess renewable power capacity. Kengen claims 86% of its energy is generated from renewable sources, mostly geothermal, from pockets of ground source heat in the Great Rift Valley. Now, local news outlet The Standard reported that Kengen has space as its new industrial park in Alcaria near its flagship geothermal power station could be rented to Bitcoin miners. Now, the acting director of geothermal development at Kengen, he said that his company is willing and eager to have the miners call Kenya home, quoting him here, we'll have them here because we have the space and the power is near, which helps with stability. Now, despite his enthusiasm, there has not yet been any reports of miners looking to go to Kenya. Now, Cambridge's Bitcoin Electricity Consumption Index suggests that the Eastern African nation currently houses no known Bitcoin mining operations, but it appears to be ideal for miners due to the region's estimated potential of 10,000 megawatt of geothermal energy capacity. Now, Kengen is currently running at a maximum generating capacity of 863 megawatts after installing another geothermal power plant in April, according to the Kenyan financial news outlet Capital FM. And by inviting miners to the country, Kengen may be able to accomplish several goals at once. It can increase miners' environmental sustainability, which has come under great scrutiny around the globe. Miners consume 119.5 terawatt hours per year, more than the entire country
country of the Netherlands, according to the CBECI. Only 31 countries consume more energy. Now, it may also drive demand for more development in Ken Jen's power grid to increase its total supply and reduce costs. Kenya currently has the 12th most expensive electricity in the world, where one kilowatt hour costs about 22 cents, according to Statista. Now, the high cost of electricity in the country may be due to its electrification rate. By 2020, only around 70% of the population had access to the centralized grid, according to the World Bank. An energy grid tracker, Energypedia, states that Kenya's high cost to connect to the grid possesses a major obstacle to its expansion. Now, the Kenyan government could also enjoy greater revenue through fees from miners and even taxes. The Kazakhstan government, for example, is poised to earn as much as $1.5 billion in revenue from miners over the next five years, although it only raked in $1.5 million in quarter one of 2022. Now, Kenya enjoys an especially high rate of crypto adoption from its volume of peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Now, the Central Bank of Kenya has been exploring its options of a central bank digital currency, better known as the CBDC, since last year. But I'd like to point out that a CBDC is nothing more than a digital version of their dollar, which is highly centralized and controlled and will be manipulated. Mark my words. So if you're looking for a true cryptocurrency that is decentralized, look no further than the king crypto, Bitcoin. I want to give a quick shout out to iTrust Capital, the number one crypto IRA platform with over $5 billion in transactions. If you're looking to trade crypto tax-free, look no further than iTrust. You can currently buy and sell over 25 cryptocurrencies as well as precious metals such as gold and silver. There are no monthly fees and just a 1% transaction fee. And they do offer institutional grade storage by Coinbase Custody. And you can get started with your account today with only $1,000. And if you sign up today, you're going to get a $100 reward when you fund your account. So go ahead and do so right now by clicking the link in the description right down below. And let's stack this crypto tax-free. Now, breaking news just in, Bitcoin miner BitZero announced they are building a $500 million facility in North Dakota. BitZero is planning to build the central headquarters for Bitcoin mining operations in North Dakota, valued at a half a billion dollars. This is a pretty big deal, as well as more breaking news. New York banned Bitcoin mining, while a city government in Texas is mining. Some embrace innovation, while others push it away. But before I break this down, first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market cap. Sitting just above $1.2 trillion with 70 1 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. The current Bitcoin dominance is 46.3%, with the Ether dominance at 17.5%. And, and checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers in the past 24 hours, we have Bitcoin Satoshi Vision leading the pack, up 3%, trading at $54.24, followed by Stellar Lumens, up 2%, trading at $0.14, cents, followed by ICP, up 1.6%, trading at $8.28. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the past week, you can see the biggest gainer is Waze with 105% gains, followed by FRTS up 29.5% with the biggest losers being Luna down 62.8% and Luna Classic down 28 0.8%. And checking out one of my favorite indicators is the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Shows we are currently rated a 10 out of 100 in extreme fear. Yesterday was a 13, last week a 12, and last month a 21 in extreme fear. And if you're not familiar with the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, extreme fear can be a sign investors are too worried. That could be a great buying opportunity like we're witnessing right now. BTFD, buy that freaking dip. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. As New York pursues efforts to ban proof of work crypto mining, the attorney general reminded investors of the risks associated with investing in crypto. That's right. In an investor alert published on Thursday, New York attorney Leticia James said investors are losing billions in crypto. And she highlighted that even digital assets that are well known and are traded in reputable exchanges can crash. And because of this, the attorney general is convinced that crypto investments create more pain than gain for investors. And apart from this, James urged New Yorkers to take extra caution when putting their money into crypto because of its volatility. The attorney general said that these investments may become a source of anxiety instead of a fortune. As she shares here on crypto Twitter, the cryptocurrency market is extremely unpredictable. Just last month, the market reached record lows and investors lost hundreds of billions of dollars. New Yorkers should be cautious and think twice before putting their hard earned money into this unstable market. Can you say FUD puppet? That's all I got to say. Now check out Luke Martin's response. If you're going to tweet factually incorrect information, I recommend turning off comments before posting. This will save you from the inevitable ratio. And even President Biden responded with his nonsense. My fellow Americans, enough. It's time for each of us to do our part. It's time to act for the children we have lost, for the children we can save, for the nation we love. Let us hear the call and cry. Let us meet this moment. Let us finally 
do something. Now, what does crypto investing have to do with lost children? This guy is absolutely insane, and probably some publicist wrote this for him in the first place because it makes absolutely no sense. Now, my favorite response was from Pompliano. Bitcoin mining protects a person's private property. New York is explicitly attacking American citizens' right to protect their private property with their proposed Bitcoin mining ban. This will likely be deemed a violation of the Fifth Amendment and unconstitutional. Now, the published alert also highlighted several factors to disencourage investors, which included the unpredictability of the market, difficulties in cashing out, high transaction costs, and the instability of some stable coins. The announcement also reminded investors that many digital currencies are unregulated. Now, the alert came as the New York Senate passed a bill banning proof of work mining within the state. If this bill gets approved by the governor, new mining operations will be prohibited, and those with licenses to operate will not be able to renew their permits. Very interesting how New York is not embracing cryptocurrency and they want to ban proof of work mining while places around the world such as Kenya are embracing and inviting miners to come to their country. Now as the bear market continues, Bitcoin mining revenue is also showing a downward trend. On May 24th, the daily mining revenue recorded a now 11 month low of $22.43 million. This is almost half of what was recorded at the start of May 1st, which was $40.57 million. And before I break down the final story of the day, venture capitalist Tim Draper explains why Bitcoin Bitcoin will soar past its $250,000 price estimate. But first, I want to remind you to smash that show more button right below this video in the description for detailed analysis of what's going on in the crypto market. This goes for all 1,200 plus videos right here on my YouTube channel. Also, some very helpful resources for you to plug into, including my crypto merch store, live at merch.cryptonewsalerts.net. Also, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. And of course, you can find me on all the major podcasts and platforms from Spotify, home of the Joe Rogan experience to Apple's iTunes and Google Play. And if you're listening to the pod, be sure to check out the YouTube channel at cryptonewsalerts.net for the full premium experience with video. And we're currently receiving over 500,000 downloads per month with the podcast. So I just want to say I greatly appreciate your continued support. But all right, now let's break down our final story of the day. Day. Venture capitalist Tim Draper has doubled down on his $250,000 Bitcoin price prediction in a recent interview with Scott Melker, aka the Wolf of All Streets. Draper was asked if he still believes that the price of Bitcoin would reach a quarter million dollars this year, in which he responded, yes, by the end of the year or early next year. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the billionaire venture capitalist. Now, Draper further explained why he believes the price of Bitcoin will surpass his prediction, quoting him here. One thing that will possibly likely happen, and I don't know exactly when, is that the women will start using Bitcoin, he described. The venture capitalist noted that previously only one in 14 Bitcoin hodlers were women. Now it's something like one in six, and I think it will eventually be better. Now, a survey back in March by crypto financial services company, BlockFi, shout out to BlockFi, found that nearly one in three American women said they plan to purchase cryptocurrencies in 2022. And furthermore, 60% of that third indicated they intend to do so in the next three months. Now, Draper explained the following, women control about 80% of retail spending and retailers haven't yet realized they can save 2% and they usually run on very thin margins. So that might be like double their profits. They can save 2% just by accepting Bitcoin instead of taking a bank issued credit card and that can change everything. He makes a great point and he also opined here, all of a sudden, all of the women will have Bitcoin wallets and they'll be buying things with Bitcoin and you are going to see a Bitcoin price that will go right through my $250,000 estimate. Let me know if you agree or disagree that we're likely to see a $250,000 plus Bitcoin price before the end of this year or by early next year, the latest, as Tim Draper predicts. Now, on May 19th, Draper told CNBC that despite the current economic condition, I am still a bull on Bitcoin because it's a great hedge against inflation. He elaborated, as the speculators leave, eventually it will diverge from the tech stocks. I agree with Tim Draper 100% and I cannot wait for a quarter million dollar Bitcoin price. Send it. Now for the top three comments from yesterday's episode, the Vosak wrote, first, I think Bitcoin's dominance hits around 55 to 60%. I don't foresee it hitting 70 again, just because the sheer number of coins out there. Second, the price has never gone below the prior cycles all time high. So I highly doubt it will happen now. Great perspective. Thanks for sharing. Crypto fam. 
HODL. And our next featured comment comes from VBerg420. I remember when Bitcoin was $52,000. Yes, indeed. I remember 69,000 all time high back in November of last year. No sweat. Bitcoin will climb back bigger and stronger as it always does. And our third and final featured comment comes from Pokemon who wrote, this market is so unpredictable, but prices are good. So buy and HODL fam and let's ride out this storm until the sunshine again. I have been here before, been buying and HODLing since 2017. And even with the crash, I'm up 3x on my original investments. Patience is the name of the game. Take care, God bless you and yours. Congrats on already being up 3x fam and for HODLing like a true Bitcoin OG. Exciting times ahead. Let's go. And to be featured on tomorrow's episode, drop me a comment right down below.